Hello, welcome to the interview here on France 24. Well, first came an innocent little ping pong match in China in 1971. Then, some 40 years later, the military-led regime of Burma went almost overnight from global pariah to playing host to a newly re-elected U.S. president. Now, my guest today believes Iran may be next in line for a relationship makeover with Washington. Yes, that Iran, the theocracy that's been lambasted by the West for decades as a rogue state bent on wreaking nuclear havoc on the world, even as it tramples on human rights at home. Now, Ardavan Amir Aslani, welcome to our studios. Thank you for having me. You're an international lawyer. You're the, you've been here before. You're the author of several books on, um, on Iran, on Islam, geopolitics, how they all interconnect. Uh, you believe all the signs are out there right now, as we speak, that Tehran and Washington are ready to lay aside decades of animosity and not just become friends, not just kiss and make up, but become good friends. Huh? Beyond that, become allies. All the signs coming out of Iran indicate that we are on the verge of a fundamental shift in local paradigm. I mean, let's go back a few months ago. You had Ahmadinejad, the previous Iranian president, who used to comment on the inexistence of the Shoah and the fact that Israel needed to be wiped off the map. Now, you have the current Iranian newly elected president, as well as the Minister of Foreign Affairs, tweeting on Twitter, which is prohibited for regular Iranians in Iran, wishing Happy New Year in Hebrew, Rosh, Happy Rosh Hashanah, to the Jewish community worldwide. Now, isn't that a big shift? Every other sign points to the same direction. The very designation of the current Minister of Foreign Affairs, who is a very credible diplomat, acknowledged as such by the American community, spent half of his life in the U.S. The removal of the Iranian ambassador to the IAEA in Vienna, the removal of the Iranian head of the atomic agency in Iran, everything that comes out of Iran is an indication that the Iranians are hoping for a rapprochement with the U.S. With the U.S. And, and let me go even further. We have had in the past few days an exchange of letters between the U.S. and Iranian uh, presidents. And now we're even having talk they might meet on the sidelines of next week's U.N. General Assembly in New York. Unprecedented. Unprecedented. And you're so right in pointing that out. The last time that Iranian diplomats met with diplomats from the West, it was in April. It was the last nuclear negotiation round. And that ended up in shambles. This time, everybody's talking about a meeting between the Iranian foreign minister and the foreign minister of the group of five plus one. Today, news came out of London saying that Haig, the uh, uh, British uh, secretary, is going to meet maybe even with President Rouhani himself. And there's even talk, although rumors, that there may be a shaking hand opportunity between President Rouhani and President Obama. Okay, cynical point of view here. It's real politic at its best, right? The Iranian economy is in free fall. Iran hates its international isolation. Yes, the sanctions are biting. It wants to step back out on the world stage. That's all there is. These are not going to be friends. They'll have a practical, pragmatic relationship. Your summary is perfect. However, I believe that there are other uh, arguments that need to be brought up, such as the fear of the Iranians from Sunni fanaticism. And look, Iranians are being targeted just as much as Americans are in the entire region. Look at al-Qaeda shooting at Iranian militants and Hezbollah militants and the the Alawis ruling Syria. These are the same guys who crushed uh, uh, on 9-11 and the twins in New York. These are the same people who indiscriminately target Americans and Iranians. But let me just also point out here, uh, you're talking about they have fear of Sunni fanaticism, uh, Iran, obviously, majority Shiite. That is correct. uh, But they're outnumbered in the broader Middle East, the Shiites. You're looking at approximately 1 billion, 600 to 800 million Sunnis, and you're looking at 100 million Shia. It's, it's, it's a 1 to 18 or 1 to 20 They lose in the numbers. They're losing the numbers, but they're not losing in power. And today, what the Americans are seeing is, look, they're looking at the Afghanistan experience, where the Taliban just blew up the consulate in an Afghan city. They're looking at Iraq and the horrendous outcome that that ended up with. They're looking at Libya, with their American ambassador being shot at by Sunni militants. And now they're saying, wait, well, maybe Iran is going to be different. We've heard a lot of talk uh, about war, the threat of war with Iran, 
Barack Obama said uh, in the past couple of days, the nuclear issue remains his priority with Iran, much more important than anything with Syria and chemical weapons. But you don't see the likelihood of the U.S. going to war. No, I don't think that there is any possibility of the Americans going to war with, the, with because? Iran. Because the Iranians themselves want to walk towards a solution on the nuclear issue. As a matter of fact, the Iranian president, one of the arguments on which he was elected was to end the nuclear quagmire. He came out the other day offering to the Americans a, a peace deal. And he basically told them, look, uh, the, the time is not open-ended. The time is short, and we need to get this thing over with. You're right. The economy, Iranian economy is, is in dire straits. They need to come out. But more so, the fear of Sunni jihadism that is shaking the entire region, and also fear of China. I mean, the Americans are looking at China and the Chinese um, control, basically, over Pakistan and seeing what's going to happen tomorrow if Iran doesn't side with the U.S. The Chinese are basically a stone's throw away from the mineral assets of the Middle East. So they need each other, basically. They need what, each other more than ever. What about, let me bring Israel into this. No, no debate here would be complete without that. Uh, Israel's prime minister continues... Uh, to show absolutely uh, not not just no love, no friendship for uh, Iran, and is not holding out that prospect, and is still speaking very much in terms of a military threat. Israel doesn't have anything against the Iranian people, Iran per se. What separates these two countries is the pursuit of a quote unquote nuclear weapon by the Iranian regime. Now, if that's going to stop, and if a deal is struck with the Americans, of course, with the Israeli consent, what's going to happen? There won't be any other argument for Israel you to, don't to despise the Iranian regime. You don't see the possibility of Israel unilaterally. No. But it couldn't do that. No, it, they could do it. They could always do it. But I don't think that they're going to do it because they're going to weigh the pros and cons of such an operation. And it's going to come to them easy that the cons outnumber the pros by far. And they also see the fact that the Iranians, all they're doing is walking towards the Americans and offering them a peace deal. Everything come out of, coming out of Iran points towards that direction. And in the United States itself, you also point out there are very strong domestic reasons. You, the you, Americans don't want to intervene anymore. They're in an isolationist mood. The last thing they want is a war with Iran. Especially in Iran is not Syria. Iran is an 80 million strong country. It is battle hardened. And, and Iranians themselves are not interested in war. And the Americans, you're so right in pointing this out, are sick and tired of wars in the Middle East. And each time they went in, they left their boys came, who came back in body bags, and the results were not as favorable as it was told to them. So when they look at Iran, they're hoping and praying for an opportunity that may turn otherwise. Okay, so oh, both sides are looking at each other and they are hoping and praying that friendship might come out of this. What about the supreme guide, uh, the Ayatollah uh, Khamenei? Isn't, he's the one calling the shots. Let me just pitch it this at you. Some observers say he's stage managing this whole thing. He actually also wants reconciliation. It is correct. That seems like a strange argument. I, I, I think as a matter of fact, it's a prerequisite for any peace debate to come out of Iran. I mean, look at the situation. Mr. Rouhani was the least likely candidate to be elected. As a matter of fact, he was not even the favorite candidate of the regime to be elected. It was this other uh, politician, Saeed Jalili, the, the, the tough Iranian nuclear negotiator. His election came as a surprise to everyone. But the supreme leader understood that this time, it, the entire governmental apparatus should line up with the people. So he decision. stage managed the process to make sure Rouhani was elected. He stage managed the process in the sense that he did not do anything that would have prevented from Rouhani's win to be acknowledged by everyone. He did not oppose his election, which was the volition of the Iranian people. And when you look at it, nobody internationally questioned his election. He got elected in the first round with more than 50% of the vote. And Ayatollah Khamenei, as well as every other prominent figure of the Islamic Republic, knows that it is in Iran's fundamental interest to strike a deal with America and, and rid of the sanctions. And, and Khamenei and, the, and the, the hardline clerics around his establishment, the revolutionary guards, the hardliners, they agree with that as well? Well, they may not be in full agreement, but they've been pushed into reason by the supreme leader. They have no choice. As a matter of fact, they, they were hoping for a U.S. strike against Syria, because had that happened, it would have emboldened them further in the regime so as to oppose Rouhani's rapprochement tentative with the Americans. There's a 900-pound gorilla in this room at this table right now, and that is shale gas in the United States. We haven't talked about it. Uh, you say by 2016, U.S. production of shale gas will be more than what Saudi Arabia, the world's largest producer, produces right now. That is correct. And that could change everything. Two things are going to change everything. 
first of all, American energy independence. As you rightly pointed out, in a short time period, America is going to become energetically independent, which means that they're no longer going to look at the Middle East with eyes of need. They're going to look at it more as a trouble center and maybe as a center for competitors than otherwise. And furthermore, the Americans, and this needs to be stressed fundamentally, have observed that Shia oil has become more important and more abundant than Sunni oil. You put Iran with Iraq and with a number of other countries in the area where the Shias are either the majority or 50-50, and Shia oil is by far more abundant than Saudi So it will also give the Americans a way to sort of get around Saudi Arabia, which is Go to the north. Look, they're in Iraq, they're in Afghanistan. The only missing link over here is Iran. Very last thing, briefly. You believe Iran played a key role in the, the Syria chemical deal, the deal to dismantle no, the chemical I'm weapons. convinced. You know, the Americans finally reached rationality on this subject. Had they gone in, first of all, I mean, I'm not going to get into the Syria matter, but it would have probably hardened the, the dynamics of the discussions over there. But furthermore, it would have totally blackballed any attempt to get closer to Iran. And I think somewhere along the line, rationality prevailed. And someone told the American administration, if you are interested in getting close to Iran and getting out of the 30-year-old uh, animosity with Iran, you better not give any arguments to the opponents to this deal in Iran for them to prevent this rapprochement, which is fundamentally in the interest of the United States. You've heard it here from Ardavan Amir Aslani, uh, Iran specialist, author of many books on Iran and Islam, that the U.S. and Iran are not just soon going to be friends again, but they could be good friends, natural allies. Thank you very much for, Thank you for having being me. my guest today. Thank Thanks you. to all of you uh, watching the interview about U.S. and Iran on the verge of perhaps a relationship makeover here on France Vincat. Thank <laughs> you.